event and i go by the name omo Umi. i'm glad to be your host today once again and okay i'm glad to be your host for today for tonight once again and i'll be gi giving a re little recap of what we did the last month we talked about boosting engagement and sales and the power of creative writings for smes and smsmes um our speaker for last month motorio madame motorio actually enlightened us a lot about how we can boost our engagement and sales not just for for all our brands out there but for our, also our personal brands we are all dif into different we all have our niche different stacks we have different businesses right here how do we boost our engagement sales engagement and sales was what um that Mushraya talked to us about so the all creative writings how it helped us bring our business into a significant into the significant aspect of the business world she talked about the importance of creative writing how it shapes our brand identity how it forges genuine connections with our target audience how it captures and makes our business relatable and accessible she also talked about um how do we know our target audience she talked about we creating a buyer persona that is you create an image of what your target audience is what then you collect the data and insight from market to you know match up the target audience she also talked about defining our objectives our problems and challenges she talked about reusing the form of storytelling, employing user-generated content, introducing content marketing strategy to boost our engagement sales. She also talked about tools that we can use to measure our sales and our engagement. She talked about Google Analytics, social media insights, marketing automation software like Allspot or Marketo. So with that, I come to an end of um, today's um, of last week's um, event, which was very, very interesting and an impacting one. And today we'll be moving on to innovation in machine learning. How does machine learning, a deep dive into the world, the revolutionary, as we all know, Legacy Lab has to do with our business and also the technology aspect of boosting our business. So we have our distinguished speaker, that goes by the name Akishika Isaac, our wonderful speaker, our expert in the world of, in the world of um, developers, in the world of developers, yes, let me put it that way, a core team member of GDSC X2, and a great, um, is it, is it not medical, is into medicine too, is into the world of medicine too, so he's actually highly knowledgeable about this, so, Akashika Isaac would love to hear from you now. I'll be handing over the mic to you. Let's let's welcome our speaker with emojis. Oh, ah, it's not easy to have an expert now. I mean, expert in the world of tech, expert in the world of medicine. It's not easy. Let's have the emojis. Let's have the emojis. Let's have the emojis. All right. Over to you, Isaac. We would love to hear from you the impact, the knowledge you would love to share to us. Um, good evening, everyone. It's an amazing um, opportunity to be here. Um, can we can we all hear me? If you can hear me, please react with an emoji. All right. Um, good evening once again. Um, today we are going to be taking a deep dive into innovations in machine learning. I did not prepare a slide, but I have a. I wrote out a PDF. I would, would not want to bore us with um, the plenty stories that I wrote inside. So I would share the PDF at the end of the lectures and then uh, at the end of the session, and then use a key point to use key points to buttress my my points, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, I'll be starting with this. I would pre, I would um, project my tab, but I won't just. Can we see my screen now? 
Hello, can we see my screen? Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> I'll be using this outline. What is machine learning? Why machine learning matters? Types of machine learning. The real world applications, which is actually where I'm going to, where we talk about the innovations in machine learning and how it's revolutionizing the world. And then we talk about the challenges, and then for people that are interested in getting started, how we can get started in um, machine learning. So the with the definition, we have um, machine learning is a field of artificial intelligence that gives computers the ability to learn and improve from experiences without explicitly programmed. And that definition itself is somewhat concise and simple enough. And this is achieved through algorithms that are trained on a vast amount of data. It's like taking all the books in the world and writing it out to something or maybe somewhere and giving an algorithm or a computer system to read through all these books that we have and identify patterns, identify um, keywords. Ident so when you see somebody request for maybe something that has a key phrase, that algorithm can search through that database or that books that he has read through and um, highlight the key phrase and use that to generate a response to what a user is trying to ask of it. Now, there's an analogy I have here. Now, imagine you try trying to learn, learn um, how to ride a bicycle. And you start by sometimes you fall, you don't get it right. And then the more you practice, the more experience you gain until you finally become stable and then you can ride. That is just how machine learning is. Now, with this analogy, it would then take us to the types of um, machine learning. Although we can come back to why machine learning matters, but it takes us directly to the types of machine learning. Now, using the analogy of a child that is trying to ride a bicycle and doesn't get it and keeps failing. Now, imagine such child had like his or her parents with her or with him, and the parent is putting the child that, okay, this is what you do. This is how you do it. This is how you take your leg. That is when we now have supervised learning or supervised machine learning. Now, in this type of machine learning, we have um, is a type of machine learning where the algorithm is trained on a labeled set. Okay, it tells you put your leg on the pedal. This is what a pedal is. You put your leg on the pedal, you press it down, then you stabilize your hand. When the parts, what the um, machine is supposed to learn. It's been labeled. This is a pedal. This is a bicycle. This is where you hold. Now that is supervised machine learning. I also gave an example. A supervised learning algorithm uses um that could be used to classify emails as spam or not. The data set would consist of emails with label spam or not. The algorithm would learn the patterns of emails that are spam and learn the patterns of emails that are not spam. That way the algorithm can identify which mails are spam and which mails are not. And then there is the unsupervised, which is um, this, using that same analogy of a child trying to ride the bike. Now, this child doesn't have his or her parents with the child. Although the learning curve will become a little bit steeper. It won't be as easy as having somebody to guide you through. But eventually, if you're persistent enough, if the, you, you will still end up learning to ride the bike. But I, I hope you are still following me. Please, I... I hope I've not lost anybody. Okay, good. Um, okay. Um, now, then we have the third commonest um, type of uh, machine learning, which is the reinforced machine learning. Now, in this type of machine learning, it's more or less like trial and error. It's more it, or like you are in the dark or you are in a maze and you are trying to find your way around the maze. Maybe when you eat a wall, uh, you know that, okay, there is no way here. Then you go right. Then maybe you continue going right. You see that, okay, we can still go right. Then you eat the wall again, then you go back. Now that reinforced means that, okay, after you try to learn something, you fail. You get a feedback that you fail. This is not the answer. Then you try again. Then you get maybe a positive answer this time around. Then you are rewarded and it tells you, okay, yes, you finally got the answer. Then you move to the next stage. You keep trying and failing till you get it right. That is the whole concept 
of um reinforced learning not to waste too much of our time now why does um why does machine learning matter why why do we need machine learning simply put to make our lives more efficient and convenient and it also improves our decision making imagine having thousands using the email example imagine having thousands of emails to read and then you're having plenty spams in it but if you you have like a mail um organizer that automatically sifts through the ones that are spam and just throws them in the spam folders and you don't get to see them and the ones that are targeted towards you and are important you get so you don't have to waste your time trying to decide whether or not to read a particular mail or not the ones that are very important to you are brought to your table it helps um yeah i said that decision making and it also helps to create products and services which are which is also part of the things we'll talk about in the innovation because as we are advancing there would be certain products that would be coming up as a result of the advent of ai and certain services that will be coming up because of the advent of ai machine learning is helping us um have things that self-driving cars um there is things like auto gpt virtual assistants and so many other personalized um automated um things um now we move to the real world applications this real world app the applications i have here are not the entire application or the limitation of um, machine learning these are just some of the um basic ones and the how do i put it maybe the ones i have come across and the ones i have um used particularly so the real world applications education which is very important we are all aware of chat gpt or maybe google bard or claudia and the likes like that and these things rather than there was a time people were saying that okay chat gpt is going to be the end of education teachers are going to be redundant and the likes like that and if you ask children to write um stuff or do assignment they just go to chat gpt and it does it for them so people don't get to learn anymore which is a school of thought on its own but then if you look on the bright side, why we rather than look at um, AI or machine learning as coming to destroy education, we can see it in the light of improving education, yeah. where we can have um, personal tutors for students. If I, I came across a platform that has this, um, I can't remember the name, but it, maybe if I do, I would include it in the slide before I send it out, that has this personalized training for students that it it doesn't allow them to um copy paste the way chat gpt does but it allows them to carry out thoughts um stepwise process to getting their answers right like if it's a maths problem it helps them get stepwise answers to it and tells them why um an answer is an answer or it also quizzes them and asks them questions that okay why are you choosing this answer then the student interacts with it just like a teacher would a personalized teacher would and they go back and forth interacting with each other that can exponentially increase the um academic performance of a child those there are studies to show that um when you have a personalized teacher like we all maybe i don't know if we all had lesson teachers in secondary school when we have personalized teachers it helps us to improve academically so ais can become our personalized teachers and for um for teachers also ai can also become assistants for them things like lesson plans lesson notes lecture schedules preparation of slides and the likes can be done quickly and automatedly using um ais and um ai and um, machine learning and we move to healthcare, and which is one of my very major um, concerns because of my field of study. There are certain things, or there are certain diagnoses in the world of medicine that are sometimes wrong because we don't have enough data. Whosoever controls data in the world that we live in is the one that controls the world. So, and one of the problems we have in Africa here is our lack of data. One or our um, inaccessibility to data maybe i won't say lack of data but we haven't collated all this data together we have the data but we have not collated them together and it is causing a lot of um problems in health sector imagine we had people that um 
that maybe they have certain family traits of a particular disease and then the parents presented in the hospital and then the data is collected okay maybe this family has an history of hypertension they have an history of kidney disease and it's on record that this family have it and personalized healthcare systems are put in place to make sure that the children do not inherit these genes or do not inherit this um this um family traits or even if they do inherit it there is personalized health care to treat them there was also an event that a friend of mine was telling me about about and um, some group of african students that are trying to come up with um a personalized um ai for health care what the a what the idea about the ai is that it would just um it's we create rather than having people test drugs, you know, these researchers that try to test drugs on people, rather than have them test drugs on people, then the drug fails, or maybe people are not compatible with the drugs. They can personalize, they can write the drug to your own genetic code such that drugs that work for me will not work for another person. Really, that, that way they are removing the risk of um, overdosing on one drug or somebody mistakenly took another person's drug or a child swallowed the drug is not supposed. So if the drug is not genetically engineered for you, it won't work for you. Those are some of the amazing benefits that machine learning can do in the aspect of healthcare. Now, we can also talk about finance. Now, another very big deal because of the porosity of um, Nigerian cyberspace not just Nigeria, the whole world as, it, as, as a whole is at the risk of um, cyber threat at any time. And if we have um, um, algorithms that can monitor the patterns of um, if it's financial fraud or monitor the patterns of um, um, currency markets for those that trade Forex and use fundamental or technical analysis to make um, predictions as to where the market would go, or to do risk assessments, to set um, profits um, and entry points. All these things are just data. There are, we've been trading currency for maybe 20, 30 years, 50 years. If all these data are extrapolated, put together, and we have algorithms that can look through, knows where the next support is, knows where the next resistance is, knows where the next best entry point to enter a market is or knows that ah, this dollar bill is fake this naira bill is fake things like that also benefit of why we should have or uh, why um machine learning is quickly revolutionizing the the world as we know it and there are people i'm very sure there are people with this um access to all these um and I call it all these trading bots that do all these um, 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 automated um, tradings and fraud detections. Then we go on to retail or business. Then we have a um, personalized product recommendation. Just the same way we go online, we just, we thought about Google spies on us, obviously, but we just said it out loud that ah, I feel like I'm um, eating something today. And then the next thing you see is, um, what you said to your phone. I don't know if anybody has come across that before. What you said, or maybe you were just discussing something and then you, and all of a sudden, that's what your phone is like recommending to you. Like, and you're like wondering that, ah, which kind of witchcraft is this? All these things are also like machine learning. Now, I think when our phone, Google and all these things take our data, they sell it to companies that, um, they sell it to companies that then use this data to target to to target us with ads and that is why certain things are just personalized to us sometimes we pick up our phones we pick up our tiktok accounts and my tiktok account is different from what your own tiktok account will show me because the algorithm knows what you like better than than i would or knows what i like better that kind of scenario so we can also use um, machine learning to target people and what they would want and how they perceive certain things. We can also do seg and customer segmentation. Okay, some particular people like to shop in the middle of the night. Some particular people like to buy things at a particular hour or some particular people prefer a product to another product. This data can be extrapolated with machine learning and be used 
to target people even more precisely inventory management while you don't have to go and say okay i have a store how many bags of rice do i have in my store or how many um stuff do i have with um, machine learning and um artificial intelligence we can since it's all data we can collect and ask for updates what is left when do i need to restock when do i need to refill and all that stuff we can also do things like demand forecasting and um product placement if as a retailer i have a product and i'm like okay we are going towards winter in um temperate region um in yeah i think in the um, western world we're going towards winter and here in africa we are like in Yamatan season and we have a product that is um season based and we have algorithms and um um and um and systems that can take this data and be like okay we i need a target audience for a particular product maybe it's clothes for a particular season what kind of people would be interested in this kind of clothes and the the algorithm would make a forecast of the people that would demand such product and would also place those the products such that it's strategic to the people that needs it and also performs a quality control to ensure that we are giving out the best product to our customers. I saw something on quality control a while back using um, machine learning for quality control. A retail, a, a, a clothes, um, a clothes company was trying was creating an algorithm to ensure that um, they give out quality um, materials at all times. So they they've trained their AI on. Um, a lot of torn clothes like okay the the algorithm can identify when a cloth is torn when a cloth is discolorized or when a cloth has patches and the likes like that when they feed these um these algorithms with enough data the, the algorithm can understand that okay this is a low quality fabric this is a torn fabric okay this isn't the color that we requested for and on and on and on and this is how machine learning is innovating the world of retail business e-commerce and the likes then we also go on to like transportation we have self-driving cars like tesla and i don't know of any other major company but tesla seems to be to strike to to strike a standout we have um traffic prediction how the self-driving cars and traffic prediction they kind of like work in synchronous where we have cars that know when to turn that knows the that can calculate the the distance between itself and the next car in front of it or those on its sides. We also have um there's also um machine learning in um in detecting transportation fraud. It's I am not sure it's very common in Africa here, yeah, but in the Western world it is where some people try to like maybe board a train without having the tickets and all that stuff. Then we also have it in um, manufacturing predictive maintenance where the machine can if if a machine is trained on a particular set long enough it can identify where it will have fault and when it will have fault like i said earlier about that clothing um, industry that uses machine learning to detect whether their clothes are high quality or not you can also do we can also have that in a manufacturing plant where we have we can make predictive maintenance like okay this is when we'll be making our next maintenance because this is how many times our machine would run before it would need to be fixed whereas if there were no machine learning or there were no systems to detect that what we would have had is um maybe is until when the machine breaks down before we'll start fixing it and stuff like that um we also have other um applications of um, machine learning such as um natural language processing now we can use this natural language processing we already use this on our day-to-day -day activities with things like chat gpt and bad and these ones they help us the normal chatbots that we have where we help me write this then it responds back to you help me summarize this it does that for you and all that stuff and we also have the image recognition where we can use that in maybe fraud detection and recognizing people and maybe airport security and all that can make use of this image recognition then speech recognition where we have 
um, virtual assistant, voice assistant, and like things that I I I don't know if we if we, any of us have used this um maybe Google Assistant or maybe Siri. And these are examples of um of AIs that use speech recognition. It's all a data set. You train these things on it. Before, when um, all these um, Google Assistant and Siri started, they were used to sound crude, but now they sound more human-like because they have been trained repeatedly on, on how human beings sound. Now they are sounding more and more like humans to the point that we won't even be able to know who is who in a couple of months or years. And also in entertainment, um, the, we have also seen this rise on things like maybe YouTube videos and the likes. I don't know. Are we still following? If you can still hear me, please drop a. Okay, good. Um, we have seen this um rise in um enter using machine learning for entertainment and the likes. I also make mention of um TikTok. It's an entertainment platform, and what you like, what another person likes, the algorithm can identify it. I use it to create things targeted for you alone. And we have YouTube videos that also uses um, AI, artificial intelligence to create content and all that stuff. And we also have um, environmental predictions. This one would encompass things like climate control, climate change, agriculture, and using machine learning to detect that um, this is the best time to plant a particular seed, or this is the best time, or this is the best type of seed to plant in a particular weather, and all those kind of intricate things that makes life easier for us. We can predict when rain would fall, how much rain would fall, would there be flood? All these things are things that are possible by machine learning. When we train our data set over and over and over based on the patterns of things that we have seen, such that when it sees something else, it can predict that this is what I'm going to do next. This is what is going to happen next. Okay, now we move on to the challenges of um, machine learning. Well, while we have talked about the innovations, the benefits of it, why we need it, it also has challenges. And some of the challenges would include bias. There was a time JGPT was heavily criticized online because of its bias towards certain people or towards certain race or towards certain religion. And you ask it to talk about certain things, it won't tell you. But then you ask it to talk about certain people, then it tells you about them. Because when you're training data sets too, if I were to be training data sets, if I don't like something, I won't include it in my data set. So that bias can also filter into machine learning. So, so it's one of the concerns of um, machine learning that how do we um, how do we create this kind of equality where there is no bias of data? All data are equal. And there is explainability. Not a lot of people can explain that, okay, this is what the machine is doing and this is how the machine handles what it is doing or, okay, this is what the machine is going to um, give you as an answer. We don't know, actually. We just train the data and we can only expect to predict its outcome. We can't say for certain what the outcome might be, which can have its upsides and downsides depending on how it goes. And we also have data privacy. Now, we already have the, the problem of um, our data being usurped by companies like Google, Facebook, and the likes, and then they sell our data and use it to target us with ads that we don't want and all that stuff. Now, there is also a problem of data privacy. BAD always tells you that don't put your sensitive information, don't input your sensitive information. Why? Because these things can also be used against you or used there was a problem of um, where people's faces, all these people that use face AIs to make in the part of the agreement, like they tell you that we have the right to use your face or use this or do that. And people still agree to it and all the like. So if you see your face somewhere now, or maybe on an ad or something, you're wondering that, ah, these people didn't um, come to seek my consent before using my face on an ad, whereas you have signed off your rights to your own face because you used an AI image app. 
then training data sets can be expensive not a lot of people or companies can train data sets effectively like maybe large language models and the likes it would take um a considerable amount of computing power and um and um, resources to train a data set and we have considerations like there are ethical concerns such like okay if um machine learning is coming it's going to automate everything it's going to do this there'll be self-driving cars and it will start making diagnosis for people what we doctors do what we drivers do and all the jobs accountants and the likes want to take away people's jobs now i think that one is a food for thought for everybody <laughs> we need to go and think about that one because at the, I also feel like at the same time, there was also a time that people were saying that, okay, um, machine learning, AI, front-end developers are going to be out of a um, job because you can just tell AI to like, give me the boilerplate or the template of a, of a website and it does it for you. Okay, style it with CSS, it does it for you. But I still think, I don't know, but I still think that it only takes someone that knows the basics of something to use AI to use it take for instance a front-end developer you don't know react you don't know html you don't know css you don't know javascript you don't know anything and you just enter chargpt and I'm telling chargpt to write code for you if chargpt writes a code that is malicious or writes something that isn't very good if you don't know how you won't be able to tell fake from original so it still takes a level of um how do i put it a level of know-how to use ai to make your jobs faster. What AI can do is now make your jobs faster. I don't particularly think it will just come and in one year or two years replace teachers or replace front-end developers or replace doctors and the likes. Now, the future of machine learning. It seems machine learning is relatively a new field or relatively young, I wouldn't say new, but relatively young compared to other um, fields. There is still so much chance for improvement there is still so much, um, how do I put it? Opportunity for people to grow. There is need for data analysts, an increasing need for data analysts, an increasing need for data scientists, computer scientists, people that understand how data works and how patterns work and how they can use these things to train language models. And we can all have a much more efficient life. <laughs> now, for those interested in um, um, machine learning, I, there is a short stuff under the, the material. To use machine learning, you have to have a basic um, understanding of mathematics. You don't have to like be a maths guru or study mathematics, but just that basic understanding of maths. Just the same way I said, like, you have to have that basic understanding such that when it gives you stuff that isn't correct, you can use your own idea to say, okay, this stuff is not correct. Then even you can contribute to the machine learning by doing reinforced learning or giving it feedback that, okay, this is wrong. This is the correct answer. Then it will note that and further and subsequently it wouldn't give you such wrong answers again. Then we have things like Python, languages like Python, that we can use for and data science and data analysis and the likes and how to get started there are um, resources and materials that we can use to get started in machine learning google has a few and um microsoft amazon and when i share this we can dig deep into the rest for ourselves and that's about everything i have not everything but for the sake of this um meeting on the innovations in um, machine learning and how it is revolutionizing the tech space as we know it. Thank you all for having me. Oh, all right. Thank you very much, Isaac, for that um, knowledge you just shared towards us. I believe. There are some people out there that have been wondering, how do I shovel these trees? How do I shovel this work? I believe like, if you can now see the things that can help you out, which is machine learning, how it can help relieve your stress, how it can help, you know, give you hands in things that could be looking stressful for you. 
how it can improve our decision making and the likes. Thank you very much for that knowledge. Um, also, before before the, we come to the end of today's event, I would like you guys to you know follow the link in follow the link in the comment section and give us your feedback of today's event. Was it impacting? Were you angry as whatever I said? What was it that you learned? What was it that you think Legacy Lab could do to you know to the betterment of this event? Oh, there's a question for you, Isaac. So what uh, over to you, Mr. David. What's your question? Mr. David, are you here with us? Oh, he said, what's the solution to lack of data in Africa? Isaac, over to you. The solution. Whoa, that question is very big. Okay. Okay. Um, let me approach the question from this, from the perspective that I am currently facing. As a medical student, we have this, um, this a, a few of my friends and I have this urge to build something to solve the current problem that we're facing in Ikiti State University Teaching Hospital, which is the problem of um, patients presenting. Um, the problem that we saw was not a lack of data. It was more of a lack of digitalization of data. The data exists but the data is not digitalized. They are mostly in paper form. Paper form that could be destroyed or maybe flooded or something. So the point is, and a lot of these people are analog people. They just want to rely on, they are writing paper, writing on paper, using virus to write. And that has been the major challenge, digitalizing the already existing data that exists I, and i spoke with some a community um how do i call it um a community um a com let me say a community doctor and he said that the problem is not the lack of policies because you say okay we blame the government maybe government isn't making policy he said the problem is implementation of this policy there, there are so many policies by the government to work on maybe collate data, collate this, collate that. But after a while, these things are not being implemented. They would say they want to digitalize a particular sector. Maybe we will see them do it for like two, three months, then they stop, there is no continuity. I think that is the problem itself. The lack of continuity, the with the lack of following up on the implementation rather than the lack of no data. The data exists, but the data is not digitalized. From the perspective of health sector, I don't know about other stuff. I'm not very um, grand about other stuff, but I think the same thing too would um, also apply. There's something called the iceberg effect, where the people that are coming or the people that you see are just a very small amount of the real problem that exists. That means the problem exists and we know the problem exists, but the small that we are seeing at the surface is, is just a projection of the big problem under, which is the lack of digitalization. I think if we can digitalize records and people get accustomed to it that, okay, we have a digital record somewhere that is accessible, then we can have research, people doing research, have access to data to use and all that. I don't know if that answers your question. Oh, all right. That's a very, very uh, legible answer. Thank you very much, Isaac. Thank you very much for the knowledge impacted. I believe by now we have all filled the feedback form. We should do well to feed, fill the feedback form. Thank you all for attending. Thank you, Legacy Lab. Thank you, GDSEX. Oh, Legacy Lab is raising his hand, though. Sir, do you have something for us? Yes, so in continuation to the question from Mr. David, which has been answered, and um, coincidentally, Mr. David is the CEO of Paperless, and um, so I want to put I want to put it out there. How do we 
um, how do we move? How do we digitize data using the state as um, as an example? Using the state as a key study, as a case study, how do we digitize the data? Um, what, what are your plans for the teaching hospital? And probably if maybe if there's any way that we in this fora can contribute and support. I can see that Mr. David uh, has already dropped his phone number for you to continue the conversation out of this group. But um, what are you guys doing towards digitizing the record? And um, how do we move from paper trails to a paperless um, um, society? Thank you. Okay, um, how we thought about going around, um, how we thought about fixing the problem. We approached the hospital with um, a concept that we wanted to help in the digitalization. Our initial plan was to have a, a, a phase where we build them a blockchain based um, digitalized um, EHR and then subsequently take their handwritten um, files and scan them, um, yeah, and scan them and just digitalize them, then label them properly such that they can be used. We have maybe case notes, file numbers, assign attributes to them so that you can search for them on the database and that. Only for us to get to the hospital, and they were like, we used to have some, not, they used to have something similar in the past. But for that review, they were like, what happened to it? And they were like, and they had a company that came to work with them, and the company provided them with hardware, and there were computer systems in the hospital and all that stuff. And then after a while, they couldn't pay for it anymore. Then the company had to take away the hardware and all that. And but what we were proposing was not a situation where we bring hardware and all that. We're saying things that even the doctors, patients can use their phones or tablets to interact with. That was what we were proposing. That an EHR that you can access on your phone. That was what we were proposing to them. And their own point of view was and um, the cost you know would have to bring in people would have to do this okay the phase where we are trying to transition from the digital to the to the from the analog to the digital once we lose data and um, people will still be using the handwritten stuff how do we ensure that okay when a doctor needs to like write inside the case notes and you're not saying okay that's the time we want to scan once the scanning impede those were the things that were on our head before we finally we just said okay we'll come back and um, address this issue but it's actually very very pressing i don't know i can't remember the other um okay you said how do we collaborate with um, um did i get that right um sir yeah um i said that uh, well <laughs> from your explanation now i I, I think there's still a long way to go. I was saying that how can this fora, um, this is a monthly um, webinar for people of like minds to come and share thoughts. And I said, how can probably, uh, how can we work together towards achieving this goal for Equity State, the um, specialist hospital there, the teaching hospital? How can we probably? work together towards achieving this goal would you need more manpower would you need resources would you need what would you probably need for us to be able to achieve this goal because obviously um okay i was at a clinic recently where um they took my vitals the basic um stops at a place and immediately i was told to go and see the doctor and the doctor just used the system and um, and um, diagnosed me, spoke to me. We interacted and was typing and all of that. And he said, okay, I should go back to the reception where I was handed over some list of tests to do. And I went to do them. Now, the good thing is even the laboratory 
um, center where I went to do the test, they no longer expect you to come back to collect your test results. Rather, they will send it to you via email. So, and um, they, they sent it to me as well as sent it to the, to the hospital. So I went back to the hospital, they checked what I was diagnosed of, recommended drugs for me, and asked me to go to the pharmacy nearby all within the compound anyway but the lab is not within the compound the lab is outside in fact it's owned by i just for the sake of um, recording i wouldn't mention the name of the lab but the i went to the pharmacy my uh, they asked my name i told them and they handed me over my drugs like without a single paper trail the only paper trail that we had was just the test results i mean the um, test the diagnostic um, diagnosis sheet, or I don't know what you guys call it. That was the only paper that I had throughout the whole experience, you know. And I compared it with like five years ago, where you know you have to probably have one small card, have one big file that you'll be taking left and right, you know, uh, have this bigger one for X ray and what have you. So I feel it's working and, you know, if we call it a teaching hospital, so I feel there should still be a way which, you know, we can still find a way to make this work in a state um, teaching hospital. And I was asking, like I said, Mr. David there is whatever, anything that comes to paperless, we still had a conversation about that yesterday. So anything that comes with paperless is very much enthusiastic about it. So I'll say again, is there any way we can all collaborate towards this, probably as a project in 2024? Thank you. Okay, yeah, I get it now. Forget the picture. Yes, there is a way we can all collaborate. In fact, all I can say here is just opportunities and the things to do. The um the the scenario you just gave is a very nice one, and it's something that I hope to see because the trails of paper when sometimes when you see it, it gets very 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 bulky, and it would be so nice for us to collaborate to fix that problem, especially in a KTA, and then subsequently address other things, not just even the paper trails, but minimum minimizing the um the amount of um travel that a patient has to do there there, there there was even a time we were proposing to them that if we can even reduce visits to the hospital so that it's only when you want to do physical examination that you come you and your doctor can interact if he needs to send you something he sends it to you you send it to the lab or you send it to the pharmacy if, if the pharmacy can even do home delivery for you just to make sure that everything is seamless and intuitive to use rather than having to come to the hospital wait then i know you get the picture but yeah it will be a very cool project to work on in 2024. all right that was that was big that was big so that's one of the um let's say let me just say that's one of the reasons for attending events that's one of the things you gain from attending events you get you know have access to networking as as fast as possible i'm very sure if um isaac was not here as a speaker or he hadn't spoken his mind about things like this i'm, I'm not sure this project would have come up right now for him and it's a very very good thing so let's always leave it on events that we attend and if mr david had not asked that oh how do we get data he wouldn't have known that isaac had the knowledge in that aspect and he has done some things in that aspect too do you understand so we're going a lot to design to gain networking again speaking up gain about machine learning and i want you to and everyone of us to take this to our art and always Use it for future purpose. All right, Isaac, don't forget to take uh, Mr. David's number in the comment section. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you, Mr. David. Thank you, Legacy Lab, GDSEXO. I appreciate you. Mr. Lord Femi is here. 
You're welcome, sir. Good evening. Thank you for attending. Wave. Thank you. Fireflies. My friends. Thank you all. Florinet. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. What have I not mentioned? Thank you all for attending. I really appreciate you guys for coming here. And I believe you guys gained what you were here for and more. See you all next month at the last last Thursday of the last Thursday of the month. That is when these events come up. I'm very sure you don't want to miss out during that period or so. I can't tell your project will also be taking up at that period of time too. So let's do well to be ambitious when coming for events. Have a wonderful night, Red. Thank you all. Thank you for coming. Good night. <laughs>